Hey guys, what's up? Good evening. So in this video, I want to talk about the um, the use of APIs. And um, this isn't something new. It's not like I'm trying to be like, hey, look what I did, you know, and, and uh, I'm, I'm some smart guy or something like that, because I'm totally not. That's not what this is about. Uh, but one of the opinions that I have, and really, it's not even an opinion, just something that's kind of crossed my mind recently is that I've often wondered, like, how do I actually create a like if I were going to create some sort of major project, um, how am I going to be able to do it? One of the things that, that always stops me from making video games is that once you start getting into the meat of the game, you're like, damn, this is a lot of work. I mean, you're, you're looking at 3D graphics or at least, you know, 3D or 2D. Um, you're looking at um, physics engines and, and game engines. And like, there's just so much, there's so many different things that you have to deal with. Uh, that's not even counting composers and uh, composer sound, uh, directors, writers, you know, there's all this stuff, right? And, um, and people that have been doing it for a long time, they do it better than me. And then I get kind of, you know, I'm just like, man, what, are, you know, what am I doing? I mean, I'm having fun, but at the same time, there's a lot of work and, and I know that this isn't really going to pay off. And, and I start doubting myself basically, and I end up getting out of it. Um, now with web development, um, as you guys have known, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm somewhat disenchanted with some of the tools that are out there right now, but, um, I, I don't think it's all that bad because honestly, like, let's, let's look at things like Re react. What does it do? It deals with JSON data, UIs. Um, you know, I've gotten through some of the headaches of, 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 you know, initially like learning those things and it's really not that big of a deal. Not as much as I, I made it out to be, but let's be honest. I also like ranting on my videos and some people like listening to the rants and it's easy to rant. Um, it's easy to bitch and, and complain about something, uh, instead of, you know, taking action and doing something about it. So every once in a while I do like to, to vent. Um, but the reason why I mention APIs is that in order to be successful, I really feel like it's it's an absolutely nece necessary thing because um, if I were going to do a jobs website, for instance, I think the first thing that I should probably try to do in order to stay relevant is to hook up to APIs. And that's something that I learned when I developed new movies. And I really wish I never brought it down because um, I, I the, the site had a lot to it and I took it all down. Um, there was something like eight, you know 100,000 pages of dynamic content between stars and movies and uh, it was all interlinked together through a um, uh, relational database using MySQL. And I, I shouldn't have taken it down, but it just became an un unmaintainable mess. But one of the things I discovered during that project as I was actually like trying to seriously build a movies website is I knew that in order to stay up to date on, on uh, you know, movie trailers, on new movie releases and things like that, I needed, an, I needed to be able to hook up to APIs to be able to do things better than what I was currently doing it. And, um, and I could write a bunch of scrapers and try to, to maintain that, that information and keep it up to date and things like that. Um, and then depending on how you get the data, you know, through scraping and things like that, um, you know, determines the legalities there. And I wouldn't be able to advise you on that, but, you know, obviously Google was a search engine that made money off of searching the web and parsing people's content and then being able to display that content and, you know, a unique way in order to provide a service. And um, the same thing could be argued instead of almost any venture I would I would be willing to wager, um, you know, depending on how you collect that data and display it. Uh, but there's all kinds of hurdles that you have to jump through. One of the issues with the movies website is I, like I realized I could not stay up to date on DVD releases and things like that. So I immediately started looking out uh, to who I could interface with in order to get that information. Who does it better than anybody else? Well, Amazon, I figured, was one of the best companies to do that because, number one, Amazon will pretty much give the API access to almost anybody that has um, you know, a business need for it. And um, they, they were much easier to work with than somebody like Rotten Tomatoes. Um, at one point, I ended up interfacing to Rotten Tomatoes, but one company that I didn't think would give me the time of day because they don't even have an affiliate program or anything like that was um, Redbox. So I was actually able to, to interface through Redbox's API and I was displaying movies that were new releases that were available on Redbox. And my entire spin on the site was that I was supposed to have like a unique rating algorithm. But then I realized that I just, I couldn't do it any better than what Rotten Tomatoes was doing. Um, so, you know, slowly but surely, I started to realize the immense amount of work and just realizing that even writing biographies and uh, movie descriptions and things like that, none of it was going to pay off because it just, you couldn't possibly do a better job than IMDb. IMDb, it was bought by Amazon for several hundred million dollars. And, um, you know, this was a long time ago, a decade ago, probably. And you just can't compete with the resources that Amazon has in order to be able to, you know, to 
to provide that information. Now, another thing I wanted to display was box office results because a lot of people are interested in how much money did the movie make. So I ended up going out to Box Office Mojo. Lo and behold, Box Office Mojo is also owned by Amazon. You wouldn't expect it, but uh, the, the point is is that a lot of these big-ass companies like Amazon and Google and Facebook and Microsoft, and all, they're buying all these content websites, and they pretty much own all of them. Like you look at CBS and who they own, um, like I would be willing to venture – uh, to say that that Hollywood Reporter is probably owned by CBS or something. I, I don't know that for a fact. I'm just going off the top of my head, but I would I would be willing to wager that some major company owns a website like Hollywood Reporter. Um, so what what am I saying in all this? What I'm saying is that hooking up to an API is so much better if they can do the the information better. Now this is something that literally just took me um, you know 15 minutes of playing around with a Google. Uh, YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but uh, uh, Google Maps API. So I got the Google Maps API, a little API token. And every time I make a call, I'm using my token and all the documentation is available for how I can actually make this call. So this website is just a locally running uh, Node way, Node.js website, which is using my Bayside.js framework. And all I do is I simply say the location. And one of the reasons why I'm just uh, making this point is like if I say London, there's obviously many different Londons. There's going to be a lot of different Londons in the United States. But Google knows that when you're, say, London, in all, in most, in, in, uh, in all likelihood, you're trying to get London, United Kingdom. Um, so they, they do this better. If I said NYC, then most people you know, equate that to New York City. Um, if I said uh, Bayside, NYC, a lot of people don't know Bayside, uh, New York City, which is an area in Queens. Uh, which is part of New York City, but it points right to Bayside. So it's like you're not going to be able to build a better map system than what Google has done already. So the point is, is that if you're going to build a map-based product, the first thing you need to be looking at is what APIs can I tap into in order to use that data. So we can, and, and the video I, I posted earlier about Silicon Valley and, and the, the whole dream of going to Silicon Valley and being uh, creating your own startup. What I'm saying is that there are bootstrap ways that you can you can build products that interface to APIs to companies that do things better than you do while you're still you know maybe in parallel trying to build you know your own particular you know maybe you will eventually try to do something that they do better than you better than them eventually but if you can't do it right now you can't afford not to use them is what i'm saying and that goes to also with the whole web framework argument. For the longest time, I remember when I was t touting Django, a lot of people would be like, well, eventually you can outgrow a framework. And, and, and everybody was talking about, can this thing scale? Can this scale? And 99.9% .9 of the time, nobody ever runs into the scaling problems. And I remember I read a quote from somebody one time where they're like, well, in this day and age, and this was years and years ago, they were like, you can't afford not to use a web framework. And for the most part, I still think that's accurate. Um, to some degree, really. I mean, I actually, yeah, I think I would say that it is accurate because honestly, like when I tried to build a website that needed authentication, I was doing the quizzes and the, the tutorials and I decided to go with Django when I built hipster code. I built Bayside JS as a minimalistic framework on top of Node.js. If I were going to build them, it depends on what I was going to build, but if I really needed, you know, secure authentication and things like that, I might go with, um, Hell, I might make the, the web website myself, depending on – it depends on what my intentions are. Really, if I needed to get out fast, I'd probably go with Django, but it really just depends on my mood. But the, the point the point is that I'm also a developer, and a lot of other people um, you know, may not – maybe if they're, they're hiring a developer to work for them, you want to just go with what, what can work you know, quickly and fast. You don't need to experiment around with new technology. Um, but one of the things I also want to tell you was that I was doing a uh, ticket website one time. I was going to build, you know, like a uh, – because I want to do – like everybody was talking about the ticket comparisons. And I saw those apps all, all over the place. I'm like, you know what? They're, these ticket comparison sites kind of suck. I'm going to do a ticket comparison site that looks at all the ticket comparison sites to find the best price, which is probably still something feasible. But I ran into problems where like um, a ticket master, they totally don't want people scraping and automating their website. They have the captures all over the place. Um, I ran into situations like uh, Eventful where I was going to list all of the uh, the concerts for different uh, venues and things like that. And Eventful was like, hey, you can use our API. And this was like one of the, the top people of the company that actually got back to my personal inquiry. And they're like, 
yeah, you could use the API, but there's going to be a charge associated with it. And I was like, ah, I don't want to deal with all that. Um, so I ended up not using them because I wasn't serious about the product. But I mean, the fact of the matter is, is if you're going to be doing a search, there's no better search API than Google. If you're going to be doing a map based system, there's, there's no ba better map system than uh, than than you than Google Maps. I mean, but there's also products that you can make with YouTube. Um, one of the products that is making a killing of late is uh, this Social Buddy. So um, Social Buddy, I think it is, uh, or YouTube Buddy. Damn, I don't even remember the name of it. So here's this YouTube Buddy channel or Tube Buddy. I can't even think of what the hell it's called. But anyway, th this company is actually a company that I. I pay money to. I, I actually pay for the for this product, not because I want to spend money every month, but it's kind of a necessity because YouTube doesn't provide enough good tools for their own API and for their own web platform, and TubeBuddy fills that void. And there's other um, websites and products that are like TubeBuddy, but TubeBuddy is used by a lot of famous YouTubers, and I decided to go with them, and ultimately I keep them around because they do one or two things very, very efficiently, and it saves me a lot of time. And for me, it's worth the 15 or 20 bucks, whatever I pay them every month, um, which is a lot. I find that to be a lot, to be honest, but because um, I think it might even be $29. I don't know, but the, the point is is that they were able to take you know, an API that's available and then also look at what it lacked and then build a new interface to, to other people um, in order to accomplish you know things that they couldn't do with the application. So, um, you know that said, like I said, you just want to you want to look into the APIs wherever possible, and then extend them, make them better. And um, another example too is if you look at a lot of the you know upload a file or you know, like we need your resume or whatever. A lot of those people are using uh, Google's Drive, the Google Drive, because a lot of people have Google Drive. It's very, very convenient that I can have information stored on a, on a secure Google-owned property like Google Drive and then be able to just say, you know what, oh, I can't upload this resume because it's on my desktop PC and I'm on my cell phone driving down the highway in my friend's car. But if you're using a modern API where you say, hey, you know what, we accept the API of Google Drive here, click this button and upload from your Google Drive account. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Obviously, authentication, we've talked about that as, as well. The whole point is that you can bootstrap, I think, you know, crazy large successful websites if you're a good programmer and you can tie all this stuff together. I really think you could be a thorn in the side, even for these million dollar venture capital startups. And at the very least, get your product off the ground so it's not some incubator idea. It's more of a bootstrapped working product before you then you know get some venture capital funding for maybe marketing and expanding um, as opposed to selling your entire company and sold for a couple million to get off the ground which most likely isn't going to be granted to you anyway unless you have rich relatives ivy league credentials or uh you know silicon valley connection one way or another um, anyway guys let me know what you think and take care have a good night and bye Hey guys, so I've talked about this a lot. Uh, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, they are my sponsor. They're one of the reasons why I'm able to do these videos. And uh, they offer a 12-week intensive course that teaches you the technologies of the here and now. They're going to focus on a lot of things that are actually being used in websites. Uh, things like jQuery and they're going to be using stacks like Node.js. The 12-week intensive course is to try to get people in the job market. So that is their entire focus. We've, all, we've talked a lot about on this channel whether or not a college degree is worth it. I'm not the one to be able to answer that question for you. I absolutely think that college degrees are great, especially in computer science. I never want to convince somebody to say that they shouldn't do that. Um, you know, obviously, schools like Stanford and MIT, I, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in envy of all those uh, graduates. However, there is you know, the bulk of developers that don't necessarily need to be the MIT graduates to actually have success in the programming world. I think I speak relatively uh, well for, for that type of person. And with coding boot camps, we're seeing them um, you know, try to offer more uh, skills, more modern day skills, because a lot of times when you're going to a computer science course in a major university, you're learning technology that's already outdated by the time you're learning it. With Dev Mountain and coding boot camps like what Dev Mountain offers, they're focusing on really what is hot right now. So, and they also focus on a relatively um, 
you know, a small set of skills in, in order to make sure that, that they are teaching you what you need to know in order to be productive in a, in a workplace environment. So make sure you guys uh, do me a favor, do yourself a favor, check out the link in the, in the description tab below for more on Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. Thanks, guys. Bye.